Welcome everyone to BDO's webinar designed for professional services firms. So my name is Anna Gerald and I'm a tax partner focused on advising professional services firms. So it's ideal for me to be chairing this event. Um, for those who don't already know, BDO is the world's fifth largest accounting network and we provide a full range of services, auditing, advisory and taxation services in over 160 countries. So we as a team have been long-standing advisors to the sector and our national professional services team is one of the largest dedicated sector teams within a UK accountancy firm. And we're very proud of what we advise our clients on. So our strong sector focus, we work with a full range of clients and they can be from boutique firms to large international businesses. We cover partnerships, privately owned businesses and corporates, listed and private equity backed businesses. So the full ambit and professional services are moving more and more into different structures. So we regularly advise professional services firms on international matters. And Germany is a common place for our clients to be doing business in. And today's webinar is all about operating in Germany. And I'm delighted today to introduce you to two of our experts in the area who have kindly agreed to be our speakers. So we have Peter Klump and Yang Eich Eckhardt, both of whom are from our BDO team in Germany. And we work very closely with them, with us in the UK team. So we work with a team in Germany advising our clients on matters such as structuring or other advisory matters as people come and go from their their um, in entities either in the country or individuals themselves. So in the hour that we have with you, we'll be covering German structures that are available. And there's a number of those. We're talking about the amendments to the German commercial code and also exploring how partnerships are taxed in Germany. So as always, we're running this webinar live. And so I do um, suggest to you that you raise questions with us as we go along. Just pop whatever you've got on your mind in the Q&A um, feature that we've got on the screen, which is should be at the top of the screen, but you'll find it if not. Um, and we'll pick up as many of those questions as we can at the end of the webinar or with you directly if we time doesn't permit during the webinar itself. But we always make sure that we finish within the hour and we will share with you the slides and a link to the recording within a few days. So first up is Peter. So Peter, over to you. Good morning. Um, I will talk about partnerships in Germany, especially with regard to partnerships for professional services. So I will give you an overview about the different forms of partnerships. And especially I will talk about the GmbH and CoKG as professional form for lawyers and patent attorneys in Germany which was not possible in the past, but is now possible. And so, yes, I will now start about with the different forms of partnerships in Germany. And in the first slide, um, the, um, the basic model of the partnership in Germany is the partnership under civil law, or as in German called the Gesellschaft des Bürgerlichen Rechts, GBR. It's regulated in the German civil code. And the regulations are in principle very old. The German civil code came in place in 1900 and there was or is currently a reform and most and everything will be updated. And um, what's very important, the Gesellschaft Bürgerlichen Rechts, partnership under civil law, is typically used for small business and independent professions, uh, what we in Germany call Freiberufler. So it's, it's the, the basic legal form for lawyers, tax advisors, or auditors. Um, what is the main problem is all partners are with unlimited personal liability towards all creditors of the GBR. So the, the legal framework given in the German civil code is in most uh, uh, pieces not mandatory, but it's not possible 
uh, to exclude the personal and unlimited liability of the partners in the partnership agreement. It cannot be excluded and it can also not be excluded after the, uh, the, uh, the new law that will come in place uh, in the, at the beginning of the next year. So this is the, um, the starting, this was the starting point. And so many people working in professional services in the past said, oh, we need uh, a legal firm with more limitation in, in UK. Um, there are also partnerships with, uh, with limited liability or in other countries. And so we also need a sort of, of partnership with a sort of limitation in Germany. And so we received uh, in 1994 in another law, the, another legal form, which was exclusively, exclusively for professional partnerships for independent professions, Freiberufler. And this was the partnership under civil law. Excuse me, no, next slide, please. Excuse me. Okay, and this was the partnership company, Partnerschaftsgesellschaft. It, uh, the law came uh, in place in uh, 1994, but there is also in generally that all partners are with unlimited personal liability towards all creditors. It's only possible to limit to the involved partner with regard to liabilities resulting from defective exercise of professional services. But this is not, let's say, a, a general limitation of the liability and um, there are a lot of questions how it can be limited in, in practice. For example, what happens if m there is more than one partner involved? What happens if a partner exits or a new partner enters? And so um, there is no uh, protection for the partners to limit their liability. As a result of this, another variation of the partnership company was introduced and this uh, was so you see on the next slide, please. It is the partnership company with limited professional liability. It's a variation of the partnership company and like the partnership company exclusively for uh, uh, individuals exercising professional services like lawyers, tax advisors, auditors, etc. In this legal form, we have the possibility to limit the liability, but only with regard to damages resulting from the defective exercise of professional services. The partnership has to enter into a specific insurance that meets certain requirements that is uh, uh, written, uh, in, uh, regulated in the law. But the main question is, this is not a complete liability a limitation of liability to a certain amount, but only to, um, to such resulting from the defective exercise of professional services, but no limitation of liability for other liability um, the company may occur. For example, liabilities resulting from, from, from leasing or renting real estate or from employment uh, contracts. Um, so, we see in Germany, we have currently for professional services in the, um, in, in the legal forms, we can use no um, legal form with, uh, with, a, uh, with a liability protection for the partners. So the question is, what other partnerships are possible in Germany? And um, what is with the commercial partnerships? Maybe there is a limitation of liability. In the next slide, we see the, the basic uh, form of the trading company commercial partnerships, the offene Handelsgesellschaft or general partnership. In um, this uh, partnership, we have also like in the Gesellschaft Bürgerlichen Rechts, uh, unlimited partner 
partner, uh, unlimited liability of all general partners towards the creditors. So this is uh, not better for the partners than, than the Gesellschaftsbürgerlichen Rechts from, from a liability protection um, uh, view. Then in the next slide, we see a company that offers the opportunity to limit the liability and is the limited partnership or Kommanditgesellschaft. It's, let's say, a variation of the general partnership, the often in Handelsgesellschaft, but it has two different types of partners. There is one general partner with unlimited personal liability towards all creditors. So um, he is liable like a partner in the general partnership. But what's more important, it's possible to also have limited partners. The limited partners, um, their liability is limited to the amount of uh, respective contribution or amount of liberty, uh, uh, liability. And this amount has to be registered with the commercial register. And so the respective limited partner has to pay in this contribution. The amount of contribution may be small. There is no statutory minimum contribution. So the amount could be 10 euro or could be 100,000 euro or 1 million euro. If the contribution is fully paid up, there is no liability of the limited partner unless the contribution is paid back to the partner. Um, this, this is um, the basic form of the limited partnership, but we see we also have one partner left with unlimited liability. So now in the next slide, we see um, a variation and we have um, a limited partnership with a GmbH, a, limited a German limited liability co company as general partner. Um, in this partnership, the liability of all partners is limited. However, the liability of the general partner is unlimited, but if he is a GmbH, um, it's li his liability is limited to its statutory capital and the liability of the limited partners is generally limited um, to the amount of liability that is registered with the commercial register. Um, as you might know, um, we, for the GmbH, we need a minimum statutory capital of 20, 25,000 euro. Um, you see in the picture, the typical form of the GmbH and CoKG um, in Germany, where the limited partners hold 100% of the capitals and the general partner may also have a contribution. Uh, but in most cases, he is not he is neither obligated nor authorized to make a contribution uh, of capital. And so he, he does not generally, in most cases, not hold an interest in the limited partnership. So the question is, we see now we have a legal form in Germany that um, offers uh, a liability protection and a general liability protections to the amount of the minimum statutory capital of a GmbH or to the registered amount of liability of the limited partners. Can this legal form be used for professional services, especially for lawyers or patent attorneys? And now we have to look into the German commercial code. In the next slide, we see the German, there was a new act, German act to modernize the law on partnership. And in this law, which will come into effect on January the 1st in 2024, the provisions in the German commercial code regarding the trading companies are revised. Until in the past, um, the German Commercial Code says 
that a trading company, as the name already expresses, must in general operate a commercial business or manage its own assets. So it may be a, case, a trading company or a company owning real estate or participations in other companies or partnerships, but it must be in general a trading company. And um, the exercising of an independent professions was something that was not uh, something that such a trading company could do. It was in, in, in the, the, the law does not provide that um, professional services may be jointly exercised um, in, such, in, in such partnerships. And now the section 107 of the German commercial code has been, will be revised with effect as 1st January of uh, 2024. And now it is expressly allowed that the joint exercise of independent professions, e.g. lawyers, patent attorneys, tax advisors, auditors, um, may be joined, uh, may be exercised in the legal form of a general or limited partnership. General partnership is not of interest because you do not have a liability protection here, but especially the GmbH and CoKG may be used for professional for independent professionals. Next, uh, what uh, provision it? Oh, excuse me, <laughs> back. Uh, provided the respective professional law permits such joint exercise. Now we have seen that. Uh, no, now please the next slide. Um, the commercial code has been amended, but as I said, also the professional law must allow, must allow that the legal form um, of a trading company can be used by um, the respective professionals. And the professional law for uh, lawyers is the German Federal Lawyers Act, Bundesrechtsanwaltsordnung, and for patent attorneys, it's the German Patent Attorney Code. And uh, both acts have been re uh, revised with effect as of August the 1st, 2022. And both acts are uh, amended and expressly allow that lawyers or patent attorneys respectively may jointly exercise their profession in professional practice firms, in Germany Berufsausübungsgesellschaften, that are organized pursuing to German law and expressly including trading companies. As, uh, that means general and limited partnerships. So the law, the law allows it, um, the, um, the, the, the professional law allows it since August 1st, 2022. Um, yes, but now, as you see, we have uh, a time lag. Um, the professional law uh, came into place with effect as of August the 1st, 2022, whereas the amendment of the commercial law will come in, if, in effect uh, with effect as of the January the 1st, 2024. And so what the question is, what is in this uh, the legal situation in this interim period between August 1st, 2022 um, and January 1st, 2024? Um, with regard to this, uh, we have a previous ruling from 2024 with regard to the professional law of tax advisors and auditors. And the professional law of tax advisors and auditors um, already allowed the limited partnership by professional law in 2014. It was already before, but in 2014, there was this ruling. And in this ruling, um, the German Federal Court of Justice said uh, that such professional law is um, allows um, such um, um, the, um, jointly exercise in the legal form 
of a GMBA of, 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 um, of a trading company, then this is a special provision to the German commercial code. So also the wording of the German commercial code does not expressly allow the use of trading companies before the 1st January and uh, 2024. It is possible um, to, to register before. So we, it's, also po it's already possible to register a limited partnership for lawyers or patent att attorneys uh, at, at this moment before January 1st, 2024. So on the next slide, I will talk about further requirements for GmbH and CoKG for lawyers. Um, we see it's generally possible, but there are further requirements. Um, the general partner, it cannot be, um, not every GmbH can be the general partner in a GmbH and CoKG for lawyers. The, the respective GmbH must also quire, qualify as a professional practice firm. This means that the shareholders of such GmbH must in principle be lawyers. However, the, laws, the law allows that also in a practice firm of uh, uh, lawyers, patent attorneys, tax advisors, or auditors may be um, shareholders, but, and it's also possible to have another professional practice firm as shareholders, but it's only possible for, for, for foreign firms if they are located in the EU or EEC. With regard to the limited partner, the same applies. The limited partners need to be lawyers, patent attorneys, or tax advisors, or auditors, or it could also be another professional practice firm, but only uh, a foreign firms, only if it's located in the EU, EEC. And the same applies to, uh, to patent attorneys, respectively, because the legal requirement, the, 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 the legal acts are, have the same wording. So, and are you muted? I'll just telling everybody to make sure that they've got their cameras on and off and uh, I'm muting, I do it myself. So thank you for that, Peter. I was just saying thank you very much for your, your piece there, Peter. I know we've got some questions that we'll come back to um, as well. So we'll, we'll move on now to Jan. So Jade, thank you very much. Um, Jan, now you're going to cover off the, the actual tax treatment of professional partnerships in Germany. Um, so over to you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Anna. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, let's go on with our early morning exercises. Let's talk about tax now. Uh, you learned a lot about the uh, corporate law of the partnerships, and I will tell you something about the taxation of them in Germany. It's uh, a bit complicated, but I will do my best to give you a very good overview. So uh, please, the next slide for me. Thanks a lot. Yeah, the taxation. We start with the taxation of the partners. For purposes of international tax law, the partnerships itself is disregarded for German income tax. So the relevant tax uh, subject is the particular partner. So they generate income that is subject either to non-resident taxation if they're resident out of Germany, like in the UK, or that is subject to resident taxation for partners resident in Germany. Yeah, it, is, it does not matter whether the, German, uh, whether the partnership is in Germany or in the UK. So if you have a UK LLP with a permanent establishment in Germany, the partners will suffer German income tax. So technically the income from the partnership, it is determined on level of the partnership. So it is not like every partner has his own income determination for his share in the partnership, but it's uh, made separately from the personal tax base of the partners on level of the partnership itself. And after this separate determination, it's allocated to each of the partners with his or her proportion and irrespective of whether he's a resident or non-resident. 
Yeah, so technically you get one uh, text assessment node, one allocation node from the tax authorities. And afterwards, the partner receives an income tax note from his or her personal tax authority. Yeah, we have a progressive tax rate in Germany. It's up to about 47.5%. It includes the solidarity surcharge. It's 5.5% uh, of the income tax. We have income tax up to 45% plus 5.5% of it. And that's the overall income taxation. Yeah, the partnership itself suffers trade tax. We will come to that later. First of all, next slide, please. Who is a partner? Yeah, for purposes of German tax law, we need two different prerequisites. The partner has to um, have partner initiative and he has to take partner risk. Partner initiative means that he participates in the entrepreneurial decisions of the partnership. So he has some shareholder rights, he has voting rights, he has control rights, objection rights. Yeah, he has the right to uh, participate in these decisions. And he has to take partner risk. It means he participates in the profits as well as in the losses of the partnership. And he participates in the goodwill of the partnership. This is the very important point. He participates in the goodwill. So if the partnership is liquidated, he receives liquidation proceedings. And if these prerequisites are met, it does not matter whether the partner is an individual, a partnership itself or a corporation. Yeah, every, every legal form can be a partner of a German partnership. Uh, very important, employees are usually no partners. Also, salary partners are not partners because usually they don't participate in the goodwill of the partnership. And maybe salary partners are also paid um, depending on the profits or on the losses. But usually, they don't participate in the goodwill and therefore, they are not considered as partners, but rather as employees. So on the next slide, um, some information about the determination of income at level of the partnership. So the regular period is in Germany is the calendar year. That's the fiscal year, the business year. It's the same as the calendar year. It is possible to apply for a deviating business year. You have to um, have to have substantial arguments for that reason. So um, yeah, something like having a lower tax rate is not a good argument. The tax uh, authorities will not grant the um, deviating business year then. I heard in the UK, you have um, a deviating business year from, I think it's May to April. This may, a very good, uh, may be a very good substantial argument for um, making such an application. So that you have the, the same business year in Germany as well as in the UK. Yeah. So accrued accountancy versus cash-based accountancy is our next point. So accrued accountancy is, uh, you all know this, you have, a, you have to make a balance sheet, you have to make a p &L statement for, um, in some constellations, you can make a cash-based accountancy. It means you, um, you, you pay the tax when the receivable is paid and not when the receivable accrues. So when you rather render your services, you file your invoice. Um, in an accrued accountancy, of course, you have to pay the, uh, pay the tax in the year or for the year the invoice is issued. And in a cash-based accountancy, maybe if the client gets uh, insolvent, then you don't have to pay the tax because you did not receive the payment. It is only possible if you are not obliged to prepare balance sheets in accordance with German or also foreign UK law. So if the UK LLP has to file uh, or to prepare balance sheet statements and PL statements, then you, it is also required in Germany. So if all of this is not applicable, so if you don't have to prepare balance sheets, then you can make such a cash-based accountancy. Yeah, another obligation uh, for having a not cash-based accounting is if you have generate or if you generate business income and if you either generate revenues over six hundred thousand euros or profits more than sixty thousand euros. Euros, I'm sorry. 
at this point only on request of the tax authorities. So in all other cases, if it's if it's not uh, if there's not an obligation, you can make the cash based accountancy. Yeah, on the next slide, some more information about the determination of income. We have yeah about three parts of income and expenses. We have the current income. Uh, it's each partner's ratio of the profits from the PL statement. You take the PL statement, you have a partner, he participates in 20% with 20%, and then yeah, his 20% is his current income. But there is a more possibility to generate income. We know some that's called special operating income, Germany Sonderbetriebseinnahmen. It's when you have a partner and he generates personal revenues for either rendering services, renting goods, or granting loans to the partnership, then we don't consider the remuneration of that as like income from services or income from rent and lease or income from interest payments, but it's income from the partnership depending on what type of income the partnership generates. If the partnership generates self-employment income, then the interest payment is self-employment income. Yeah. The same on the other side, special operating expenses. If a partner has some personal expenses with relation to the partnership interest, like um, he has interest payments related to a loan for the acquisition of the partnership interest, then it's so-called special operating expenses, or in Germany, it's uh, Sonderbetriebsausgaben. Yeah, all those incomes and expenses, they are subject to the separate determination I mentioned a few, few slides before. Yeah, you don't uh, can go this way that the partner um, considers his special operating expenses only in his income tax return. No, no, that does not work. It has to be filed in the tax allocation or determination return of the partnership itself. Yeah, for purposes of international tax law, very interesting is that in Germany, we have a treaty override regarding this special operating income. For the purposes of the double tax treaty, we consider all the special operating expenses and income as business profits, according, according to Article 7 double tax treaty, and not as income from real estate or interest or something like that. This means Article 7 double tax treaty means uh, the kind of the state and, and where the permanent establishment is uh, is located can levy tax and maybe in the uk the tax authorities say oh come on it's interest income yeah it's interest payments we can levy tax and ooh, not very good both countries levy tax yeah you have to consider this when uh, making dealings between partner and the partnership so on the next slide we have the trade tax. So trade tax is taxation of the partnership itself. It is not part of the taxation of the partners, it's the partnership itself, but it's only applicable if the income generated through this partnership is deemed as business income and not as income resulting from self-employment. Income from self-employment is if uh, the partners are lawyers. Yeah, I will uh, get back to this on a later slide. Um, but if you have business income, the partnership will be trade taxed. So it's a bit uh, complicated to, to estimate this trade tax basis. You, need, you take the amount for income tax purposes, the current income plus the special operating income of all the partners, less the special operating expenses of all the partners. And you have some special trade tax non-deductibles, like 25% of the interest payments of the partnership if it has a loan, or I think about 20% or 10% of uh, rent, renting expenses for real estate and so on. There are some special in the list. And you have some special trade tax deductions, like for real estate owned by the partnership itself. Yeah, there is about 1.2% of the value of the, of the real estate can be deducted. And after all that, you have a tax exemption amount, 24,500 euros for the whole partnership, irrespective of whether there is one partner or 100 partners, it's not for each partner, it's one for the partnership as it is the tax subject. 
So with this tax base, you multiply it with 3.5% and you get the base amount of trade tax. So it means 1,000 euro tax base uh, means 35 euro base amount. The base amount is not the tax, it's just the base amount. The tax rate actually depends on the location or on the municipality of the PE, where the PE is located, the permanent establishment. So I had have made some examples for bigger cities in Germany. It's in Berlin, it's the multiplier 410%. So with our example, 35 euro base amount makes about 143 euro trade tax. The same in Hamburg, it has a multiplier of 470% and you suffer in this case 164.5 trade tax. And in Munich, it's even more expensive. It's 171.5 euro trade tax. I can give you an overview, overview about this on the next slide. But first of all, what is the implication of the trade tax? You hear, oh, an additional tax means an additional tax burden. No, not in every case. So the trade tax, uh, there are some tax credit, credits granted onto the income of the tax partner in his own income tax. These uh, tax credits are limited to 3.8-fold of the partner's proportion and the trade tax base amount. Yeah, on the last slide, it was the uh, 35 euros. So 35 multiplied with 3.8 is the limitation of the tax credits. I will give you an example on the bottom of the slide. Um, and it is also, of course, limited to the trade tax actually paid by the partnership because you don't get more credits than the tax you all, you have suffered before. Uh, it is also separately determined and allocated the, the, the um, tax base amount and the trade tax paid on level of the partnership. So it's also nothing you have to consider in the income tax return of the partner himself, but more in the partnership. Um, the proportion of the partner for those trade tax credits, um, it relates to the general allocation key of the partnership. The special operating expenses and the special operating income, they are not considered. It means if you have a partner having a very high income from the special operating income, um, he will have not enough tax credits to uh, have a plus minus zero in this amount, but he will have more income tax than the, or, or he will suffer more income tax than he gets trade tax credits. So we have an example for one partner. We have uh, some municipalities here. The lowest amount is like in Dragoon. It's a small city in Mecklenburg, Western Pomerania. Um, it has a multiplier of 200% and the highest is Deerfeld. It's a small city somewhere. I, I actually don't know where. Um, it has 900%. It only has five, <laughs> five citizens in the city, but 900%. It has no business. Don't know why, um, but okay. So you see here, yeah, the multiplier, you have the trade tax. Let's go through Berlin. You have a trade tax with a 410% multiplier if you have income of 250,000. Trade tax 35,000 and a bit. You have the 3.8 fold of the trade tax base amount. It's 8,750. And you look whether you know, the, the minimum of, oh, I made a mistake on this slide. The minimum of three or four is 33,000. And so you have a um, tax burden overall of 102,000. So it's a tax rate effectively of about 41.15%. Yeah, next slide, please. Um, I just wanted to tell you how to distinguish between income from self-employment versus business income. So to generate or to have income from self-employment, cumulative, all partners have to be accredited professional individuals and they have to lead the partnership responsibly. Yeah, they all have to render professional services and the partnership only shall render professional services. Yeah. So the, the, the partners are not the employees, as I said before. Yeah? Even if they are professionals, professionals, they are not considered as partners. So all of the services rendered by the employee 
uh, employed professionals, they have to be supervised by a partner. Yeah. If all those prerequisites are met, then you have self-employment income. This means on the other side, business income, you have it if at least one partner is a corporation, like in the GmbH and CoKG. Yeah. This means uh, you have um, a trade-off, like you in the GmbH and CoKG, you don't have any personal liability, but you suffer trade tax. Yeah. That's a little downside, but uh, with the tax credits, depending on the municipality, it's maybe not that bad. So if at least one partner only holds the partnership interest without acting as a professional, like only working for client relationship, saying hello to the client and then come on, employee, do the work. Yeah, this will lead to business income. Not very good. If the partnership renders other than professional services, like, don't know, like giving loans or something like that, um, it may be a problem. No, it is a problem. It generates business income. And if at least one of the employee professional renders services without such a supervision of a partner, then it's also business income. If you have a little business income amount, it leads to a requalification of all income of the partnership. And after all that, all income of the partnership is business income and it is subject to trade tax. We don't distinguish within the partnership, no, is a part business income and is a part self-employment? No. A bit business income means all business income. So finally, just a few words on the next slide to value added tax. The partnership is a VAT entrepreneur for German tax purposes uh, and the services rendered from it to VAT entrepreneurs, they are taxable in the country where the recipient is resident. It means usually to German clients, it is um, taxable in Germany. If the partnership is located outside Germany, we have a research reverse charge principle, the recipient has to pay VAT. So services to individuals, they are taxable in the country where the professional is resident. And um, usually the VAT accrues at the time when the services are rendered. Um, if we think back to what I said about accrued cash uh, or accrued uh, balance sheets or accrued determination of income versus cash-based um, determination, we have a simplification for self-employed lawyers and also for the partnerships of them. The VAT accrues at the time when the invoices are paid, but you have to apply for it. Yeah. So after all, I'm fine with taxation. I hope to give you a good overview. Thank you very much. And uh, back to Anna. Thanks. Thank you very much for that, Yang Ike. Um, we have some time for some questions and I've got some in front of me, but if there's any others that anyone would like to, to raise to the team, then um, please do so. And we'll have Peter and Yang Ike um, available to answer some questions. Um, so if I can kick, uh, I think this one is probably for you, Peter, if I may. Um, so we, we, you were talking there about the, the introduction of some changes that might be welcome um, by some professional services firms. And you talked about the changes in the legislation um, from the 1st of August <clears throat> 22 that applies for, for both lawyers and also patent attorneys. Um, have people taken up the opportunity to use the structure where they can register for a GmbH and Co KG? Um, so have there any been any lawyers or any patent attorneys at this stage applying for that, that, that structure or registering for that structure? Yes, there have been registrations. Um, in Germany, in, in um, the commercial register, you can take a look into it. Everybody can 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 it's it's open for everybody and and it does not it it was uh, uh, you have to pay for it in the past but now it's open so you can take a look into it and so I just uh, bef before the webinar I, I I took a look into it and 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 to uh, to check uh, how many uh, partnerships are there and uh, I found that there are seven partnerships. Um, uh, GM, excuse me, GmbH and CoKG for lawyers registered already with the commercial register. However, no uh, GmbH and CoKGs uh, for patent attorneys. Got it. Okay. Um, do, are you expecting to see more 
is do you think this is going to be a bit of a trend that people start using this and I, I know there's some sort of complexities in relation to the ownership structures and, and who's allowed to be owners but is there an expectation there well i think that there we will see more in in in, in the future i think Sure. Yeah. Okay. And so, so this is probably a linked question, actually. But could a UK law firm, so for example, a UK LLP, become a general limited partner of a professional uh, practice firm in in Germany? Is that possible? No, because uh, only a professional practice law firm that is located in the EU or EEC could become a partner of a, a GmbH co KG. So a, a UK LLP could not be a, become a partner. Yeah, so this is probably going to be really relevant in relation to mm. you know what, what what's possible and sort of leading to perhaps more complex planning and more more sort of detailed considerations about how to to utilize the relevant structures, and that makes sense. Okay. Um, Okay, so uh, there's a question here just about why um, the partnership company with limited professional liability was actually introduced in the first place. I don't know if you can shed any light on that. Yes, because when the, 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 the partnership company was introduced, the limited, uh, uh, pro, there was no real limited protections and uh, because it was only possible to limit uh, the liability to the partner that is involved but um, the people um, in, in, in Germany in, in the past preferred then the, uh, the UK LLP. And um, in, in Germany, um, you saw in the past a lot of German law firms that used uh, the UK LLP as legal form for their professional practice in Germany. And um, in order to make the, the, the German partnership company more attractive, um, they created the, uh, the, professional, uh, the, the partnership company with uh, limited professional liability. Um, this was the idea. Yeah, yeah. So, so trying to sort of make sure that it's still relevant um, for businesses rather than using sort of alternative structures. Yes, to make it more more popular, to make it more relevant, because the people uh, German people said limited protection of the German partnership company uh, is insufficient. We then prefer, for example, the UK LLP. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And and so, so some um, tax questions here. Um, and there's one on VAT. Um, so just to pick this one up. So this is talking about Brexit, and I know we've already covered the implications to a certain extent of structuring um, when the UK left um, the EU. But this is another relevant one related to Brexit. So this is about reverse charges. So is um, a reverse charge for VAT still applicable when invoicing um, from the UK to Germany? Um, or, or is this no longer available to, to use? And do we actually need to set up a registration in for VAT purposes in Germany in this circumstance? That's a very good question. Uh, I will have to look it up, but um, just as an educated guess, I think it's not a prerequisite that um, that the person who's rendering services is located in the European Union for the reverse charge principle. It's uh, just relevant that it's a VAT entrepreneur resident outside of Germany. And uh, in all that cases, it is um, the, the, the VAT apply uh, or cruise in the country where the recipient of the services is resident so it's in germany but also uh, only if it's um if the recipient is also vt entrepreneur fine okay i know it's a little nuance so um if the person would like us to sort of uh, comment in detail with the relevant facts then we'll be happy to do that but um i thought we'll raise it given it's a brexit related question as well um Okay, so some other tax points, um, probably for you, Yang Aik, um, but I'm sure Peter will chip in if, if, if required. Um, so which trade tax rate applies if a partnership has, say, a permanent establishment in two or more different um, places? So you talked about Munich there and, and Berlin. What happens, you know, you might have a branch effectively in both places. So, so how do you go about dealing with that? Yes, if you have a branch in 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 both in both uh, cities, then you have permanent establishment in both cities, and also you have employees 
usually in both cities. And the trade tax base amount, it is apportioned on basis of the wake paid to the to the employees, depending on their location. So if you have um, like uh, the, the wake amount of 100,000 euro in the in, in Munich, let's say, and 50,000 euro in Berlin, then the trade tax base amount is apportioned two of two thirds to Munich and one third to Berlin. And after that, the multiplier of the particular city applies. Got it. Okay. Okay. And um, at which trade tax multiplier um, is the trade tax higher than the income tax credits? Yeah, this is on a quite low basis. It's about 400%. If a municipality has 400% uh, multiplier, then it's about the, the trade tax credits is about the trade tax itself. And um, this means in Berlin, Hamburg, Munich, and also in Frankfurt, um, the trade tax exceeds actually the income tax credits. So you've got to be really careful, as you say, sort of looking at the location and making sure that people understand how much after tax um, income yes. there and will that be. You, that you actually have people there. So it's uh, quite common in Germany that you have some bureau in a municipality with a lower trade tax rate, um, but there are no people. And if there are no people, you can't allocate any trade tax base amount there. Yeah. So yeah. No, yeah, no letterbox company. Yeah, exactly. And particularly interesting as people are quite uh, mobile nowadays, given you know after COVID where people might yeah. be moving around or living um, and, and providing their services. Um, so how is it? So this is a sort of slightly different tax. So this is really looking at, um, I suppose, the structuring as the, some of the things that we would talk to you guys about. So how is the sale of a partnership interest taxed in Germany? Yeah, the sale is also determined uh, at determined level of the partnership or not the sale itself, but the gains realized by the sale of the partnership interest. Um, it is separately determined, determined, sorry, determined and uh, afterwards allocated to the selling partner. And on his or her level, it is taxed with corporate or income tax, depending on whether it's a corporation or it's an individual. And if the selling partner is a natural person, the gains realized by sale of the whole partnership interest, not of part of it, but of the whole partnership interest, is trade tax free. And in this case, uh, there can be a preferential treatment on in the income tax uh, to reduce the impact of the progressive income tax rate, but only applicable if the whole partnership is, uh, interest is sold and not part of it. Yeah, okay, so it's, it's really tricky. It's making sure that you get the right set of facts and that you apply the right, obviously, the tax to it. So no, no difference to, to other areas um, of, of taxation that, that tend to be, you know, have to understand detail in order to really understand the situation. Um, and that's fine. Um, I have run out of questions to ask you. I know we've got a couple of minutes before before we close, but is there anything that either of you would like to really draw out for the audience to sort of make sure that people are aware? I and mean, I think I've heard a few things that you've mentioned of making sure that the, the, the structuring is carefully considered given obviously the liability position, but also um, how do you structure it given we're talking often from a UK standpoint where the, the UK may be the headquarters and there's activity that is pouring out of the UK around the world, um, making sure that you understand how the, the relevant structures can be used given the UK is no longer in the EU. It's obviously a, a mm. critical point. But is, is there other points that you would like to make to the audience or um, um, are you happy to, to, um, to say goodbye? Don't be yeah. shy. We have to be shy. We have to answer. <laughs> yeah, please just say, you know, this is you live and breathe this. And, and not normally our audience will be coming from a UK perspective, either, you know, individuals in the tax team or from the finance team. And they're looking for those little things that you sort of think, yeah, actually, I need to just be aware of that when I'm thinking about Germany. Okay, so I'm like, I think we haven't got any further questions, but Yang, if there's anything, Yang Ike, if there's anything else that you would like to say just before you close and then um, Peter. Mm -hmm. no. Just thank you for being here. Thank you.
No, no, thank you. And I really appreciate your, the, both of your time um, covering off those points there and also the slides. This is a very detailed situation that we've got for the different structuring and obviously the tax implications and particularly determining whether or not there is trade tax that is due or not due. Um, so there's a lot of complications there, but I really, we really appreciate your time today and thank, thank you very much for your, your well um, communicated messages. So thank you. And, and thank you also for You're our be circulating the slides and the recording over the next few days. Thank Thanks. you very much. Bye-bye.